Hello, Thomas. Hello, Thomas. How are you? Fine, fine, very fine. We have uh, very bad weather here. A rainy day. Wow. And it's good to, good to drink Rivera Del Duero wines probably today. Oh, yes. <laughs> Where are you? You're, you're at home, aren't you? Um, I'm in, in our office in Zurich. Yeah. Okay. In, yeah. Okay. I, I thought you were at home because uh, I, I heard Alice, Alicia. Yes, she's also in the office. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> there she is. Well, fantastic, fantastic. Hola, Alicia, ¿qué tal? <laughs> well, uh, yes, here we are. Let's, let me uh, introduce you a little bit. And uh, okay. please connect me, you know, but just for the people, there were some people asking uh, uh, about you and all that. And well, just wanted to mention that uh, <clears throat> Thomas Vatalaus is one of the most knowledgeable men in terms of wine in Switzerland. <laughs> and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Thomas, you've been more than 30 years uh, dealing with wines. Uh, tasting wines, making amazing reports, comparatives, and, uh, and of course you are the editor of this fantastic uh, magazine. Yeah, it's true. It's not 30 years, it's 25 years. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. No, don't pretend to be younger. <laughs> no, but uh, and, uh, Thomas, you also have a uh, I, I think, you know, uh, the most uh, relevant uh, wine agency uh, together with uh, Alicia, who is Spanish, uh, in terms of uh, marketing wine in Switzerland, you help uh, wineries, uh, Spanish wineries, Italian wineries, uh, French wineries uh, to market and to develop uh, strategies in, in Switzerland. And not only that, also... Uh, mm, regulatory councils like Rioja, like uh, Rivera del Duero. Uh, so uh, you, you know a lot about wines and you know a lot about the market. Uh, I hope, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know a little bit about sailing. Sailing? Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I know about sailing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, well, Last, last time, um, you were invited to come over to see us, but uh, uh, unfortunately for us, and I think fortunately for you, you were uh, sailing in, in the Côte d'Azur. Yeah, it was a terrible week. It was, it was the first three days, too much wind, mistral winds, it was not possible to sail, and after it was rainy three days, so it was a terrible week. Probably it was much better when to Rivera Vero in this week. Yes, yes. Well, we, we had the, you, 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 you sent us some uh, very good substitutes. <laughs> yes. We, we had a good time with them. And um, I think, you know, they, they came out a little bit surprised. You know, they, they had the chance as well to, to share some time with uh, the owner, with Yolanda and uh, we had some uh, crazy tastings, and, and then finally, as well, we had the the, the incredible chance of uh, having lunch with uh, Mark Knopfler. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I think they, they they I hope they they loved it. You know. <laughs> no, 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 no. They are very happy about his trip. So yeah, yeah. He told me a lot of things about it. <laughs> no, no. It was also great for Vinom because uh, Mark Knopfler also. He'll sign the bottles. He signed the bottles and we organized the competition of the Vinum website and that was very successful for Vinum. I think it was one of the most successful um, uh, competition in the last year that we done in on the Vinum webpage. So it was very good for us. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, you know, that, that it was, a, <clears throat> they, they made their, their job, Nicole and uh, and uh, you know they, they they told me hey you know Alfonso you have you have to help us you know you have to uh, uh, 
uh, try to get uh, some bottles from uh, Mark, you know, uh, signed and dedicated to uh, Vinum and to the readers. And, uh, you know, he, he was the, the man was signing so many uh, CDs and so many uh, uh, books and things and pictures, you know, that uh, but uh, but he was a lovely man, you know, and he was, uh, he wondered I mean, who were they, he asked, you know, and uh, some, uh, some, I think it was like a, about one month later after he was here, he was in, in Zurich uh, performing yes. at the uh, Hallen Stadium. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and the, the manager or the owner of Hallen Stadium happens that he was here as well. Okay. He was okay. here uh, like uh, some months ago as well, one year ago or something like that. And uh, and, uh, and when he learned that uh, Mark Knopfler was here and he, uh, uh, well, he loved the wines and all that, he, uh, he <laughs> when Mark went to Hallen Stadium, he prepared a bottle of Alduero for himself and uh, and he said that he was at the winery as well, and so. Uh, well, you know uh, the Hall the Hallen Stadion is only two hundred meters from the Wienum office, so all really? days when you know I passed, uh, yeah, to the Hallen Stadion is the biggest concert hall in Switzerland for more than ten thousand people, but now it's it's empty. Yeah, in Corona times, it's it's always empty there when I when I see the stadium. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, well, um, I think it would be interesting to say, you know, to everybody that is watching that um, that Switzerland is a, is a small country. You know, I, I, I clarify this, uh, Thomas, because there are many people from abroad, you know, that maybe they, they watch this. It's a small country in the heart of Europe with about 9 million people living. Is is bordering France, Germany, and Italy, and Austria. Yeah. A very important wine producing countries. A Switzerland itself is a, a produces fantastic wines, fantastic, lovely uh, white wines. And um, Switzerland, this tiny uh, country, is the, the the probably the highest consumer of wines per capita in terms of liters in the world. And mm. definitely, definitely, I would say the uh, the consumer of the uh, highest uh, level wines in the world as well. Mm. I, I think in the Vatican they drink more liters of wine than we in Switzerland, and probably <laughs> some small areas in the Asian they have, they pay uh, yeah similar similar prices for the wine. But it's true we have very high consumption. I think thirty four liters per head and also we we give quite a lot of money for each bottle so and also when you when you speak about Ribeiro Alvero in, in many years Switzerland was the the leading export market for Ribeiro Alvero wines and not only in value also in liters so this is uh, quite surprising when a country with only 8.5 million people they drink not only in, in, in value also in volume yeah so a lot of wine from your area. It's very, very impressive that being so close to Bordeaux, to Burgundy, to the great Italian wines, and, and still of all the countries that Ribera del Duero exports, more than 100 countries, uh, Switzerland has been for many years and still is the, the country that uh, buys the largest quantity in terms of volumes and also uh, in terms of value per bottle. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's fantastic and it's quite amazing and it's a, it's a wonderful you know, that a you know a, a marketing agency and a, and a like a, like yours like a Medler Waterhouse and and Vino magazine a, reports not only about Italian wines about French wines but also Austrian wines but also about uh, this uh, these high quality wines as well from La Rioja from from Ribera del Duero and. And, and well, it's, it's, it's fantastic that you help, you know, uh, uh, accept and, and you accept us and you, you, you let the consumer get to know about, about these wines. Yeah, we try, to, we try to write about the countries and areas 
were Swiss people drink the wines, and this is definitely also Spain and definitely also Ribeiro Duero. So it's yeah. When we organize and we, when we look for the mix in each edition, we always will be reflect. We want to reflect a little bit the market, so what the people like to drink, and yeah. One, one question uh, Thomas, that I've always been asking uh, myself at, um, let's say, at, at a personal level, uh, 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 because, you know, Swiss people, you are very international. But in your, your case, Thomas, uh, you, you don't speak Spanish, do you? No, no. Unfortunately, not. No. <laughs> I have, it's not a problem. So <laughs> my partner is perfect. So I... Uh, That, that's why you are with Alicia, right? <laughs> uh, we had also Vinum, uh, uh, Vinum that for, for a long time we had uh, partners uh, with a company that's called Opus Wine. Uh, so they, for many years, they, they also produced a Spanish edition of Vinum. And we have there a Swiss photographer who lived for 30 years in Madrid. And I always work with him together. So when I visit uh, wineries in the earlier times in Spain, he always helped me to translate what the wine group said. So <laughs> this works always very good. No problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we are uh, my my colleague here. Uh, she's uh, helping us. We had some uh, little technical uh, issue with an incoming call, but uh, I think it's, it's pretty much uh, fixed. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, um, so in which language do you, of course, uh, Alicia, she's, uh, of course, she's fluent in German. Yeah, she, <laughs> she speaks quite a lot of languages, five, I think. And uh, for me, as a German, is, we live here in the German part of Switzerland. Um, but we have uh, also a big part, they speak French. So we also, we speak a little bit French and yeah english also so yeah but she she speaks also italian and uh yeah italian english yeah she's quite good in languages <laughs> women women are, are always saving us <laughs> thomas <laughs> anyway so um uh, by the way uh, thomas when did you fail uh, when did you fall in love with wine how many uh, why did you fall in love with wine Um, yeah. story so I was first, I was, we can say, a, a normal, I was a normal journalist. Mm -hmm. I write about politic things and, uh, and also uh, cultural things and then more and more about lifestyle things. And in this time, uh, when I write more about lifestyle, I have first contact with wine and yeah, then it was per accident. I write more about wine and it was never my target to, to write on the uh, at the end, at the end I, I was a wine journalist. So in, in the first time it was still funny when I visit, for example, a city, I don't know, a city in French or a city in Spain, I write not only about wine, I also look for other themes. So probably I write about tourism and about an artist. And then I mix it. So I, I, I write something about wine and something about another theme. But more and more and more in the end, they all people think uh, you are a wine journalist and they ask me only for write about wine. So, <laughs> yeah, oh. this, this is the story. Yeah. <laughs> it was your fate. There, there was no other possibility for you to escape from, from wine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's true that it's, it's, a, it's a world that captures you. Once you start with wine, it's, it's true that it's very, uh, it's difficult to run out of wine. Yeah, for me, it was perfect, Tim, uh, because uh, oh, I think wine grower are, are, they are, it's very interesting, the character, because they are, have very strong relation with your place. So they are really also farmers or a generation, they know the place very well. But um, when they produce good wines, they also travel a lot. So they know also a lot about uh, urban places. They go to New York or they go to Zurich. And I think this context with people um, 
very home in one place, uh, produce wine in one place, and then otherwise they are open-minded, uh, travel uh, through the world. This is, they are very interesting peoples, yeah. And it's always after 30, 25 years um, uh, in this job, uh, it's still very interesting to visit uh, wine growers and wine areas. Yes. What, what is your... Uh... A favorite a Swiss wine? I know that is a little bit of a sensitive question. Or what is your favorite a Swiss wine region or wine a Swiss wine grape? If I if I if I may ask, probably my favorite region is um, we call that Bündner Herrschaft. This Grison is a mountain area, so near to the ski resorts. Uh, in the German-speaking yeah, part, near uh, Chur is the capital of this part of Switzerland, and they put uh, especially very good uh, Pinot Noirs, so more in a Burgundian way, and for white wines also very good Chardonnays, and they have also one out of tone grape, Lied Completer, and this is also they give wonderful white wines. It's a small area only. 500 hectares, but uh, very known in Switzerland and also a little bit in the foreign countries. Yeah. I have to say that I was I, I was uh, uh, absolutely amazed when I first uh, saw uh, Vaud, uh, the Lake of Geneva, and then when I when I saw and I tasted the wines from Valle, the yeah. Petit Tardin, the Umagne, all these wines and Chasselas and I, I, I have to to say that I yeah um, I was very impressed with uh, Swiss white wines and Swiss uh, quality of course. Okay, very good. <laughs> so, um, well, um, uh, we we don't have that that much uh, time, but um, uh, we. Uh, uh, we, we agree, or you propose as well, to taste uh, some wines. Uh, Thomas, if, if you want, we can go on and taste uh, some of the, of, of the wines from Valduero. And, uh, well, we keep on chatting a little bit. Uh, is that okay with you? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Re ready for, for some uh, fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. You have the white one. I have also the white one is here. Uh, all right. We um, you you propose, and I think it was a, a very very interesting uh, idea to uh, to to um, uh, like you like we said, Switzerland is the largest market in the world for Ribera del Duero wines, but uh, nobody knows or very few people knows in Switzerland even that uh, we have our white wine. Yep. That Ribera Duro sends uh, just about one month ago, <laughs> we have our uh, wine, <laughs> uh, white wine from Ribera del Duero. Uh, yeah. Made of the I... Albillo, our indigenous grape variety. <laughs> and finally, it bears yeah. the back label of Ribera del Duero. I think probably the bottle you're opening right now is the first uh, white wine with the back label of Ribera del Duero that is um, drunk and open in Switzerland. Yeah, yeah. I I tasted some Abios earlier, but never with this original label from Ribera del Duero. I think in the earlier times it was always Vino de la Tierra. And I was also surprised when I so the Ribera Duero back label on this bottle. So I think it's a very good thing that you can produce now these white wines really with the Ribera del Duero origin. I think, uh, yeah, gives a little bit a new perspective about the area because the white wine, the white wine is, the character of the white wine is probably not that, but you, but you think what is what is the crowd of the wines when you know the when you know the red wines? So because this is really a cool climate, a cool climate uh, white wine with quite a very good acidity and a very good freshness. And you, when you taste this wine blind, I think here in Switzerland nobody 
nobody will say this comes from liberal liberal Duero, probably from a, a warm uh, country like uh, maybe Italy or or Spain. Yeah, that's uh, this is this is why uh, Yolanda, the owner, she thought well uh, uh, because some people, you know, some wine critics, they think that uh, this this should be a secondary wine in Ribera del Duero. But Yolanda, here she thinks that uh, the Albillo variety deserves a first level, should be considered uh, uh, as the same level as the red wines. And, okay. and she always says that she thought that the, the best white wines in the world come from cold regions, like you say, Riesling yeah. from Germany, uh, Gruna Verlina from Austria, uh, the white wines from Switzerland, and here we have one of the coldest climates of Europe at uh, almost 900 meters above sea level. No, no, I think this one is really interesting. I know some years ago, the people from Vega Sicilia, they tried to produce also white wine. They make a lot of experiments with Marsan or uh, grapes from Rhone Valley or also with Chardonnay, but they are, they are never happy with the result. And, and probably when you work with this old grape, original grape from our area, the result is in the end much uh, better and more authentic. Uh, so I think this is the right way to try to produce really these fresh wines from this variety. Uh, it's very surprising and it's a really a new perspective about the area. So it's, yeah, I like it very much, this white wine. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, yeah, I say, yeah, I say we, we've been 30 years producing it and, and yeah, Yolanda, she's, she always uh, says that it's, uh, it, it's very spectacular, the wine, but it's true that it takes many, many years to somehow to master and to, to control. You know, it's, it has a very difficult uh, treatment, very difficult vinification. But very soon we will release the first uh, Grand Reservas, uh, uh, white Grand Reservas. Okay, what? So if uh, well, when when the wine is ready, you know. But uh, we have some uh, some uh, bottles from 2015 already uh, waiting, you know, to to be released. Okay, we'll see. It, it will be our first. You know that all the wines we produce, they all have oak and they are all aged. This is the only fresh wine from the year that we produce, and um, but it will be really. I mean, we've been doing, you know, uh, experiments in a way, you know, uh, aging white wine. We are very, I think we know very well how to age red wines. But then we found that uh, it's not that easy to age white wines and that is very different. And uh, they've been making many trials for several years until, you know, you get the, the right point, you know, that is, is not too oaky. And we are no, working no. on that. <laughs> I don't know exactly, but I think the CDT is quite uh, good and probably the pH is, is, is low. So mm, you have possibilities to go in a way with more mature wines from this grape. Must be possible. Yeah. We have to send you some samples and, and, and get to know your opinion. Uh, you that, that you, uh, you, you taste there so many because here is not very common, you know, in Spain, we are not really specialists in uh, white wines with oak, you know. Mm. And, um, and it's, it's good to know what, what the people think, you know, and uh, so we, we are working on, on that project. <laughs> but um, yes, um, we can, we can, uh, unfortunately, you know, Thomas, sometimes these, these meetings, they go faster than one uh, expects, you know, and uh, so uh, <laughs> uh, let, let's pretend as Spanish that we are hardworking people and that we do things fast and effectively, you know. Okay, very good. <laughs> so, uh, um, by the way, now, thanks to the, to the new uh, appellation, we can name this wine Balduero. You will have the, the, the brand name of Val Duero. Okay. But, um, when we're talking about this wine, um, 
is um, uh, I think you you mentioned as well you 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 told me about this wine uh, the next. Um, Asaya, 2017, yeah? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, this wine is... Um, is is the first time, Thomas, that you, you, you try Asaya, probably? Oh, no, uh, no. No, no. I think we have tasted together once. Well, in one, of, one of your magazines, you chose this wine now that I... I, yeah. I remember uh, in a in a tasting of Castilla y León. You okay, this as, uh, your favorite is true. Okay, I, I forgot about it. <laughs> but um, but uh, yeah, this is a wine from Castilla y León. It's not is the it's not from Ribera del Duero, and it's a wine that comes from high altitude uh, lands bordering Ribera del Duero. One hundred percent Tempranillo as well. It's very it's very interesting when you when you taste this wine and you compare that with your classical wines like the Reserva and the Grand Reserva is completely another character. But if something is similar, so it's still an elegant wine. A, you, you, you 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 can find a lot of fresh fruit because it's yeah it's also a younger a younger vintage. But he has still the elegance. Um, the wood management is very good, and the wine has um, yeah, also freshness and a very good structure. So it's not only fruit driven. So it's it's quite a very good expression of a, of a fruit driven wine, but not only with fruit, but also with structure and freshness. And I like it very much. This one, yeah. Yes. Uh... <clears throat> You, you mentioned, you point out, it, it was of all the wines from Castilla y Leon, I remember that you uh, tasted in this report, this was not chosen as the best, even though you specifically uh, thought it was, uh, it was one of your choices. Yeah. But uh, I have to tell you that uh, without willing to make publicity about other magazines, uh, the Canter chose uh, uh, this wine as one of the best 50 wines in the world. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, this, this tasting in Vinum, where you speak about, it was a tasting uh, on the red wines from Vino de la Tierra, uh, the Castilla. And um, also when you taste this kind of wines, there are a lot of wines has a lot of oak influence. Yeah? When, you, when you taste probably 50 or 60 or 70 wines from, from uh, Tierra de Castilla, there are a lot of wines in the classical style with, uh, yeah, uh, powerful oak influence. And uh, when you have a wine like that in a range with these wines, so then it's a very nice surprising with the freshness and the fruit and it's very delicate, this wine. And uh, yeah, I like it very much. Yeah. Mm. Yes, I think freshness, like you say, uh, like you said several times, is like the signature of this winery and is what is uh, really many times looking for you know a very mm. they are very gastronomic wines wines yeah. that totally, yeah. balance the, the, the degrees of the meat or, or the Yes, very, like you said, more modern than the classic uh, wines from Ribera del Duero. Yeah, for me, it's a. Uh, I, I taste first the Reserva and the Gran Reserva, and then in the end, this wine. And probably, probably better in when we do it now in this way, uh, because it's more subtle character and 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 and, and uh, yeah. Reserva and Grand Reserva, yeah, they are more powerful and also more riper, a riper style. But I think the general stylistic, you also find the general stylistic from your winery. This is really the elegance, uh, the very good management with the oak. It's never, the oak is never the main influence in the wine. It's still very, very good integrated and 
all these things you have also in this wine. There is more fruit than in the other ones, and it's probably a younger, a little bit a younger fruit. But the ground philosophy, the central philosophy, you can find it also in this way, in this wine, I think. Yeah. Hey, Thomas, when was the first time you came to Spain? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, I, I was with child, as a child with my parents, I <laughs> visited Spain. Also, some bullfights in yeah in the in the late sixties, yeah. But for beef wine, it probably it was ninety five, and I think uh, one of the first trips to Spain I visit not your winery, but I visit I think uh, the, your townhouse with this fireplace uh, in your village, and we have I think uh, a lunch there. Uh, different tasting and that was in uh, 1995 I think so in 1995 I was the first time in your village I think I had not visited the winery in this time but this this townhouse uh, I can remember that we had their lunch yeah so long long time ago so exactly well, 20 uh, well uh, you I mean, uh, we, it's, yeah. I thought you were coming to Spain every year. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I since since ten years or fifteen years, uh, more or less, I visit each year Spain, uh, uh, different areas. So I try to visit probably one area and then another year, another one, and I come back two, three years later. It's I think when you know the region. It's not necessary that you go all year. So uh, when you have a general um, impression, um, then it's okay. You wait three, four years, and then you go again, and you have an update, and uh, then you have a very good uh, feeling for the development in, in these areas. Mm -hmm. This is that about the grind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, at, at the beginning, I thought that it was since 1995 that you didn't come to Spain. But it was the first. It was the first so, time. You, you come every year, you come every year, almost every year, yeah. After 95, uh, okay, uh, in Vinum, after 95, we have we had this cooperation with Opus Wine, with uh, Carlos Delgado, Bartolome Sanchez in Madrid. So then normally also these people write for us, so we translate the text of these Spanish journalists. And then after, yeah, after 2000, I came more or less each year to Spain, yeah. Because uh, Alicia's family is from Granada, maybe, or? Uh, the family is from Madrid, but the uh, origin is Catalonia, I think. So, yeah, it's a Catalonian family that lives in Madrid. <laughs> wow, very brave, very brave. <laughs> But today, today, cultural and politically, they are more Madrid than uh, <laughs> Catalonia. <laughs> uh, nothing could make me happier. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good, good. Um, okay, well, um, we can, uh, if you want, we can pass to, uh, to yeah. another wine. Uh, this is a uh, Balduero six uh, years, six años Balduero premium. Now we go to in uh, uh, we get into older older things. We make this little trip through time. You chose these uh, two wines. Uh, well, our specialty uh, wines, H wines, and. Um, Yeah. Yeah, this wine is uh, nine years old. Yeah, this this is for me a little bit the benchmark wine from Balduero. Yeah, this but shows very very good the statistic of the of the winery. It's it's I think when you taste uh, wine is uh, in different places for for describe the wine and for rate the wine uh, Normally, you, you need to have some other wines in your head. It's only your memories gives you the possibility to 
yeah, to rate these wines and 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 I think this statistic we can find in this uh, reserva premium is really that was uh, shows the character what uh, what what really make it uh, special. So in my head, for a, for ex I can say uh, okay, I, the first visit I have always the Pesquera wines in my in my in my memory because in this time it was a uh, yeah, huge wines, uh, powerful with the American oak. Um, so this is one thing where you, when you, you have it always in your, in your, in your, in your brain when you taste it. And of course, also for example, Vega Sicilia, what is a little bit a special wine, probably mixture from a French style and a Ribeiro Adriero style is also unique. And later you have Alto. Alto is probably for me always was like the modern interpretation of Pesquera, so 20, 30 years later, also very, very powerful with also a lot of tannins, uh, always. And then in the new years, you have probably also uh, wines like Adauta, or it's more, a little bit the fresher style. And for me, Madeira, it was always a little bit the elegant, really, the really elegant style and also a little bit... Uh, a velvet character of the of the tannins. So they ha they have a present tannins, but always is is always elegant. This is that what I have in my yeah uh, in my head about um, uh, Valduero, and where you you can find it in all these uh, reserva uh, reserva premium Grand Reserva. The general character character is 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 here, and uh, for me it's also always a little bit. Um, the place uh, when you when you speak about center of Ribeiro de Duero, so probably in Penafiel or more in the western part, there is more the heavier wines, and when you go to the eastern part, it's more the fresher wines. But in the heart of Ribeira, you can have these two components and uh, with a lot of elegance, and that is for me a little bit what Valduera shows the people. Yeah, and you find it really in this wine here. Yeah, I also compare. Yeah, yeah. Wine, uh, well, I, you 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 talk about the very specific uh, detailed things um, about Ribera del Duero. Exactly, you went from from the top uh, uh, eastern <laughs> highest altitude wines like Dominio de Tauta, Borgognese, Freshness, and. Uh, all the way to the very rich uh, 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 alto wines uh, from the uh, from the west, from yeah. the lower part of the river, uh, fruit-driven wines, and um, and uh, yes, yes. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, you, you know better because, like you say, it's very important. I think to in terms of uh, talking about a wine to taste and to have in your mind all these different wines to position and to uh, place the wine in, in, the, in the right. Uh, but it's true that we are in the middle of these uh, two extremes a little bit. And um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a wine that tries to have this balance, this freshness, and also the, the structure and the, the complexity of the Vega Sicilia, of the good old pesqueras as well that uh, no this is um, a lot of berry fruit i said that the nose is 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 uh, is is very open yeah uh, a lot of uh, very complex nose with fruit driven a little bit the nose yeah it was a little bit tobacco and the chocolate but uh, also in the mouth is um, it's really elegant tannins, what makes this wine very, very drinkable and is, is complex and drinkable at the same time. And uh, I also compare this wine with your normal Reserva a little bit. And it's also, you can really see there is a difference between uh, these two wines. Also, also the Reserva is, is the normal <laughs> Reserva is, is very good. But for me, this uh, reserva cream is a little bit more gentle and a little, uh, yeah, uh, velvet is a little bit more here. So it's a, it's a it's a little bit really, yeah, more elegant than the 
the normal reserva, but both are very good. But it's important that you can see the difference. I, you know, I, all uh, Vinum chose this wine, you know, it was amazing for us, you know, that uh, two years in a row was chosen best uh, red wine of Rivera del Duero by Vinum. Yeah. But um, the, the reality is that many, many uh, top sommeliers and uh, uh, international sommeliers, uh, they, they, they always think this wine is our best wine. Even Yolanda, the owner, says this wine is made to... To is is for her is her you know her more most uh, uh, loving wine, and um, and uh, and it's a wine that she makes to, to give pleasure to the nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, but uh, I I always say that I I, I must not know a, a lot about wines, you know, uh, Thomas, because uh, for me my favorite wine uh, is not this one. Okay. Is, the, is the next one that we are going to try okay. uh, that, that you chose okay. is the Grand Reserva, you know. But um, so uh, let's uh, that's 2011, and uh, now we move to the 2010. Yeah, vale. um, Just one little thing, uh, Thomas. Before I I I pour the wine, let us uh, because we are running out of battery. We will turn it off and we will uh, reconnect with you in one second. Okay. Okay, no problem. Now that the party was starting, uh, these these things only happen in Spain, you know. <laughs> yeah. That that's that's the good thing of making tasting with with wrestling, you know. With what? With that's the the good thing of making tastings with wrestling. <laughs> you always reach all the way till the end without problems, you know. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Thomas, next time uh, we have to do this here. <laughs> yeah, it's better. <laughs> I agree. We we cannot wait another twenty five years. Yeah, no, no, we can do it uh, <laughs> sooner. <laughs> What is the Côte d'Azur, you know, compared to this? The Côte d'Azur? Yes. <laughs> that's, that's nothing, you know. <laughs> I'm, I, I was always thinking, you know, and uh, I mean, wow, I mean, uh, Thomas must be drinking good wines in this boat, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 no problem. But we, we can't we can buy too expensive wine because there are too many people on the boat. Ah, uh, how, how, how many people were you in the boat? Yeah, it depends uh, on the size of the boat, but we have eight to ten people. It's a sailing boat, huh? Yeah, it's a uh, 55 it's, uh, 18 to 20. Into 20 meters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, that is something that I've never done, you know, but I, I would have loved, I mean, I would love to uh, go sailing. I love mountains. I have to say, you know, that, that I, for me, mountains are mountains. And that's why I, one of the reasons that I love uh, Switzerland. But <laughs> I, I also like the sea a lot, you know. I, but but the sea, the cold sea, not the very warm sea, you know. Yeah, um, I like also the uh, coast of Scotland, for example. And uh, how does it see you have a great water? It's very good. Hmm. We have some problems. You hear me? I I hear you, but uh, now and then, you hear mm -hmm. me well. I hear you now, but sometimes I, have, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let me know what you think about the, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, under, I understand that this one is your favorite. Um, I think it's, this wine is um, 10 years old, but also here. The freshness is unbelievable. I think uh, don't feel it's not a it's not really a, much, a matured uh, Grand Reserva. So ten years, 
you feel that in the complexity of the wines, that you feel a lot of fruit, and also the fruit is not only in the nose, only in the mouth. You have still really a pure, pure fruit with complexity, and uh, I think yeah, it makes this wine really special. Also, in this wine, you have really a good acidity, a ripe, good acidity, and uh, also the tannins are present, but they are very fine and elegant. So, yeah. This is this is really fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Okay, the price is also a little bit more than the other one. It's a little bit fantastic the price as well. <laughs> <laughs> must, yeah. must be must be better than the other. But yes. is it true? So it's it's the price makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We we yeah. You know. Remember that our salaries are not like Swiss salaries in any case, you know. <laughs> no, but um, yes, um, no, it's uh, uh, like yes. also in the notes you have uh, uh, for me red berries, more red berries than dark berries, and we have also. Uh, licorice, so mint, um, black chocolate, very comp. You have black chocolate, but not tabac. You don't. The oak is all so elegant, and, um, more a fresher. Is is quite a fresh oak influence, and uh, yeah, a very elegant, complex wine. The nose and also in the mouth. Yeah, so very very good uh, grand reserve. Hmm. Also, with, with, with a lot of potential. Again, it's not in the you 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 can can uh, drink this wine also after five six years more. It's no problem. I think you you think uh, <clears throat> Thomas that the the prestige of uh, Ribera del, that that Ribera del Duero has gained in such a short period of time. You think is is. Uh, you think it deserves this uh, prestige in such a short period of time, or, or what do you think? Um, for a lot of people, I think in a really short time, the Verdero wine is really the true, the true Spanish character what they look for. So um, concentration. Of course, so they are not light wines, they are not Burgundian wines. Um, so there is a lot of expression, there is a lot of concentration in these wines, and that probably is that what a lot of Swiss people are also looking for. They want really intense wine from Spain, and Rede Vaduero is like a synonym for the type. For me, Vaduero is an interpretation of that, and that is the good thing, it's not only Today is not only one character of Ribera de Oro wine. So, in, so when you look in Ribera de Oro, there are really different characters of wines. And Baduero, one one part of that. But there are also people that are looking for really, really, really heavy, full concentrated wines. And probably also Alto, they they sell a lot of wine. And then there are people they're looking a little bit for another stylistic, more elegant, and then more, yeah, uh, also more elegant, fruit-driven, complex style. And probably they find it in Baduero. And, and, and in the market are different different philosophies from Rebe Aduero. I think that makes it very interesting. It's not only one stylistic, so... It's, it's a, a huge diversity of statistics. And, but yeah, probably the, the, the success means with wine like Pesquera, uh, really, really, uh, yeah, concentrated uh, wines with uh, a lot of oak influence, American oak influence, that was the beginning. And that makes also the beginning of the success in Switzerland. And then with the more diversity of the wines, um, yeah, now it's, the picture is much fuller and much more interesting than in the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, by the way, um, Thomas, uh, we, we send you a bottle of a new wine that it, 
is has only been released at private level, you know. It's only like <laughs> 700 bottles. It's Una Cepa Premium. Okay. And uh, we uh, that that uh, if you want keep this bottle for you and Alicia, <laughs> 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 and I I would like that you you open this uh, this wine one day and you let us know your opinion. Okay. And um, and, and also Yolanda told me that uh, 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 whenever you come here, uh, we the the bottle of twelve años, another of our wines. Maduro Grand Reserva, 12 años, 1999. We will, it will be open when you, when you come here to, to <laughs> share, <laughs> to share with us a, a, a baby lamb here with these fantastic views. You can, uh, I'll, I'll show you where we are, Thomas. Uh, wow, yeah, nice. And uh, yes. Yeah, this is a good reason to come to visit you. It is the best. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> no Côte d'Azur. No Côte d'Azur. No, no risk. No risk in the in the in the sea. <laughs> uh, yeah. Vineyards, vineyard, good wine and land is also a good reason yes. to travel. Yes. Uh, okay. All right, uh, Thomas. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I've I've taken more time from you than I asked for. You know, uh, I I I really appreciate. You know, I really appreciate uh, when I first came to Switzerland. You know, and uh, yeah, uh, not 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 often. You know, people uh, uh, wine critics like you uh, have the time. You know, to uh, to to spend some hours. Uh, uh, tasting, relax uh, with uh, the thousands, the millions of uh, winemakers that are in the world, you know. And you took this time, <laughs> and you came, and you said, "Of course, you know." And and I appreciate that a lot, you know. And uh, and now again, uh, you like uh, many other, honestly, uh, uh, celebrities and and top wine critics are are saying yes, you know, in these uh, difficult moments, you know. Uh, in the world, you know. Uh, also for us, it's a difficult moment. This is, yeah, for everybody in this, in this, um, yeah, in this industry is, is a tough time. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and you said immediately, yes, of course, Alfonso, let's uh, taste together the wines. Uh, let's open some bottles and uh, let's talk about what I think about the wines. And, and I, I appreciate that, you know, I appreciate your time then, now, and uh, yeah, the only thing that I, uh, that I would uh, ask once, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm a person uh, born to ask for favors, <laughs> is for you to come here once, you know, and, uh, and uh, spend a day, you know, like, uh, like we did with Nicole. <laughs> okay, yes, hopefully. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So um, so uh, cheers and uh, and we keep in touch. We keep in touch and uh, looking forward to see you soon. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been a pleasure to visit you. Thank yes. you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Hello.